Hello everyone, I'm Junyu Choi, a postdoc at UT Austin working with Dr. Robert Heath. The title of my presentation today is Advanced Limited Feedback Designs for FDMIMO Using Uniform Plan Arrays. Now the benefit of Massimo MIMO is well known. It can support a large number of users simultaneously to boost the network throughput and also it can improve the energy efficiency by deploying a small power amplifier in each antenna. To obtain the full benefit of massive MIMO, the base station needs to know the accurate knowledge. So most of massive MIMO work assume TDD, time distance duplexing, to exploit channel reciprocity and sidestep downlink channel estimation and quantization problems. In TDD, the base station can learn the downlink channel using the omlink pilot from the user because uh, channels are reciprocal. However, most of current cellular systems today rely on uh, frequency deviant duplexing, FDD, and wireless communication systems need to satisfy backward comparability. So we believe that massive MIMO should support not just TDD but also FDD at least in their early stages. In FDD, the user learns the downlink channel through the downlink pilot and it quantizes the downlink channel and feeds back the quantized channel to the base station. So it is crucial to develop efficient channel estimation and quantization algorithms to deploy FDD massive MIMO. There has some previous work on FDD massive MIMO. Um, for downlink training, closed loop training was proposed in the first reference where the, where the user feeds back the expected best training signal to the base station and base station relies on that fed back training signal for the next time channel training. And in the second uh, reference, open loop training was proposed uh, by assuming that the base station has long term channel statistics such as a temporal or special correlation. These two uh, papers show that even in massive MIMO, the downlink training overhead can be uh, not so large to, for the user to learn the uh, accurate channel knowledge. For the channel quantization techniques, uh, compressed sensing type method were proposed in these three and four, uh, third and fourth references, which use the channel sparsity. And to reduce the uh, quantization complexity, complexity uh, duality between the channel coding and channel quantization was exploited in these uh, two papers. The problem is that all these papers have not considered the practical massive MIMO antenna structure. And for dimension MIMO or FD MIMO using uniform plan array is a practical implementation of massive MIMO. By placing antennas in both horizontal and vertical domains, uh, it is possible to deploy more antennas in limited space. And also, the base station can control beams uh, in both domains, the horizontal and vertical, so that it can support more users with reduced interference by cleverly, cleverly designing uh, these beams. Even for limited feedback, we can exploit this uh, FDMIMO structure or the UPA structure to improve the quantization uh, performance or reduce the feedback overhead. So to study the limited feedback in FD, uh, FD MIMO, we assume the base station has N sub V times N sub H antennas, where N sub V is the number of rows and N sub H is the number of columns in this UPA structure. We also assume the horizontal wise antenna indexing as in this figure. And the first we focus on the user has a single antenna. And because we are studying the limited feedback, we first assume the point-to-point -point, point -point communication and the user has the perfect channel knowledge. Then the received signal Y can be represented as this, where this row is the transmit SNR, H is the N by one channel vector, F is the beamformer, S is the data symbol, and N is the uh, additive noise. To model this H, we adapt, we adapt 3D channel which is frequently used for performance evaluation in 3GPP standard. Although this channel model is still stochastic model, uh, it is very hard to analyze mathematically, so we need to study this uh, 3G channel model numerically. And the problem of uh, limit feedback in massive MIMO is 
the large number of this uh, n, the number of antennas. And this makes messy MIMO hard to quantize the channel. So, the chronicle product or KP codebook is a popular way to quantize the channel in FD MIMO. Uh, in fact, it is one of the optimal ways of quantizing H. And to show this, we first construct this channel matrix H bar by uh, reordering the channel vector H. So this H bar has the same dimension of this UPA structure such that the dimension of this H bar is n sub V times n sub H. And once we perform a SVD operation uh, on this H bar, we get these matrices and these matrices have some kind of physical meaning. So this uh, left singular matrix U represent the dominant dominant direction of the uh, horizontal domain and this uh, right, singular vector, right singular matrix B uh, represent the dominant direction in the uh, vertical, uh, yeah, vertical domain. Using these matrices, uh, we can represent the channel vector H as the sum of scaled chronicle product of uh, two left and right singular vectors. So if the user can feed back these variables to the base station, then the base station can uh, reconstruct this H uh, efficiently. Then the question is, how many singular vectors should be fed back to balance between the feedback overhead and the quantization performance? And to answer this question, we perform uh, some numerical studies based on this 3D channel model with these uh, parameters. So this plot is the CDF of the fractional channel gain contained in the first dominant eigen direction, which is defined as the, uh, the chronicle product of the U sub 1 and V sub 1. So this plot shows that 90% of channel gain is contained in the uh, first dominant eigen direction for 70% of the channel realization. So it shows that most of the channel gain is contained in, the f in this first dominant eigen direction. So in this work, we focus on quantizing U sub 1 and V sub 1. In conventional KP codebook, DF codebooks are commonly used to quantize U sub 1 and V sub 1. So at the user side, it quantizes the V sub 1 and U sub 1 using uh, two DF codebooks that can possibly have different size and dimensions. And it feeds back the selected the indices of the selected coder that represent the, this V sub 1 and V sub 1 and U sub 1. Then the base station reconstructs the quantized channel by performing the chronicle product. And because we are focusing on the point to point communication, the beamform is nothing but this C sub cron. To show the limitation of this original KP codebook, we plot uh, three different uh, scenarios here scenarios of the normalized beamform gain. So the upper blue solid line is the perfect case, which is always one. And this uh, blue dot line is the fractional channel gain contained in the first dominant eigen direction. And this red solid line is the normalized, normalized beamform gain uh, obtained by the, the original chronicle codebook. So as you can see in this plot, even though we are allowed to have more feedback bits to quantize this U sub 1 and V sub 1, uh, the performance of the chronicle product codebook quickly saturates and it does not help to improve the quantization performance. So to overcome this limitation, we first analyze the beam pattern of this 3D channel model. And to do that, we first define the array gain, which shows the power intensity contained in V sub 1, you can, you can do the similar thing for the U sub 1 as well, and V sub 1 according to the phase. So these two figures are the two snapshots of the two channel realization. And as you can see, in one case, there is only one dominant path in this V sub 1, but in the other case, there are two dominant paths uh, in the V sub 1. So in the original KP codebook, it only quantizes the dominant path. So 
if the channel looks like in this left plot or figure, then the performance of the KP codebook, original KP codebook would be very uh, good. But if the channel looks like in the right figure, because it only quantizes the dominant path and it totally ignores the second dominant path, the performance uh, is somewhat limited. Therefore, we need to develop some uh, algorithms to quantize multiple dominant path in V sub 1 and U sub 1 uh, if they are necessary. To do that, we come up with two different techniques. And the first one is 2DFT coder selection. So here, we focus on the 2DFT coder, but uh, the concept can be easily generalized to the multiple coder selections. So in this first technique, we first generate three DFT codebooks, uh, which has uh, different sizes. And there are three steps. So in step one, we quantize the dominant path using this uh, large size DFT codebook. In step two, we quantize the two dominant path successively using these two small size DFT codebooks. And we can put more bits on this first uh, small size DFT codebook to give more weight on the first dominant path. In step three, we compare these two approaches and select the coder that gives better performance. So which requires one bit additional feedback overhead. So total feedback overhead is given as this. And it is important to uh, mention that this approach is still a KP structure. That is, a uh, whole this step is, try to, is trying to have better quantization for V sub 1 and U sub 1. But at the end, the base station still perform performs this uh, chronical, product codebook, chronical, chronical product to get the quantized channel. So it's still a family of uh, KP structure or codebook. So and in the second proposed technique, we can design a whole new code words. That is, uh, we can design, we, we generate a code word as a sum of two DFT code words. And we can numerically optimize the indexes of i and j. And for example, we, con we can construct a 6-bit codebook that consists of uh, 32 DFT coders and 32 new coders from this table 2. And in this table 2, for example, the Fourier coder is the sum of the second and third DFT coder with proper normalization. And again, um, this new codebook is trying to quantize B sub and U sub more accurately. But at the end, the base station performed the chronicle product to get the quantized channel. To evaluate the proposed techniques, uh, we perform a Monte Carlo simulation to, uh, to show the normalized beamform gain as before. So we compare four different uh, scenarios. The perfect one, which is always one, and the uh, fractional channel gain contained in the first dominant eigendirection. And uh, this black dot is the chronicle, original chronicle product codebook with different sizes of codebook. And this red dot is the proposed techniques. So we compare these four with different number of antennas and anti-indexings. So as you can see, the performance of the, performance of the chronicle product codebook doesn't improve, at, it doesn't improve at all, even though we put more bits on the codebook. On the other hand, this proposed technique uh, effectively increased the quantization performance, even with the same feedback overhead with the chronicle product codebook. And some people might, uh, might argue that this, incre this performance increment is somewhat marginal, but uh, we strongly say that it's not. So to show this, uh, Assuming that we want to quantize the 64 by 1 ch uh, IID Rayleigh dis distributed uh, channel using RBQ codebook, then we need to have a 10 bit of additional feedback overhead to have this amount of uh, performance improvement. And 10 bit is not negligible at all. So, and we achieve this performance increment even with the same feedback overhead. So we effectively improve the performance 
of the KP codebook by cleverly designing a limit, limited feedback uh, approach. So to sum up, FDMIMO is a practical massive MIMO structure, which is the uniform plan array. It is space efficient and it can support more users with less interference. Although the chronicle product codebook or structure using DFT codebooks is commonly assumed in FDD, uh, FD, FD MIMO, its performance is limited and we cannot improve the quantize, channel content performance even though we allow, we allow the system to have more feedback overhead. Therefore, we propose two effective ways to improve the KP structure. The first one is using multiple DFT codewords, uh, selecting multiple DFT codewords, and the second one is designing a whole new codewords. And these two are still a family of the KP structure, so that this proposed technique can be easily harmonized with the uh, uh, already proposed techniques in standard or already adapted, adapted techniques in the standard. And the whole the purpose of this approach is to exploit multiple download paths in eigendirections. So we can have another approach uh, to further improve the performance and which can, which can be thought as a future work. And yeah, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Okay, and this is good. <laughs>